Hello everyone, I'm Anurj Nakade and you're watching Live Law. The Supreme Court on Thursday, the 31st of August, has asked if the fine imposed as a part of the sentence is not paid by the convict, would it have any effect on the remission of a prisoner? The question was posed to senior advocate Siddharth Luthra, who appeared for one of the convicts in the Bilkis Bano case. Our regular viewers might be aware that during the communal riots that took place in the state of Gujarat in 2002, a 21-year-old and 5 months pregnant Bilkis Bano was gang-raped. Seven of her family members, including her 3-year-old daughter, were killed in the incident. A number of cases were registered in Gujarat against the persons who committed these crimes. And later in 2004, the Supreme Court transferred the cases to a Sessions Court in Maharashtra for fairness of the trial. In 2008, the Sessions Court in Maharashtra convicted the accused persons for murder and rape of a pregnant woman. In 2017, the Bombay High Court upheld the conviction and life imprisonment for 11 convicts in this case. But later, after 15 years in jail and conviction, one of the accused filed for remission, which is to get an early release from prison in the Gujarat High Court. The Gujarat High Court said that the appropriate government to take decision with respect to the remission was Maharashtra government because they were convicted by a Sessions Court in Mumbai and their conviction was upheld by the Bombay High Court. The convicts then approached the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said that the remission application must be decided by the Gujarat government as the crime had occurred in that state. The Supreme Court said that at the time of the trial of the accused, it was transferred to Maharashtra under exceptional circumstances. But the transfer to Maharashtra was limited only for the purposes of the trial. Then, last year in 2022, the Gujarat government used its powers to release all 11 convicts in the Bilkis Bano case on 75th Independence Day of India. Bilkis Bano, the survivor of this crime, filed a review petition against the Supreme Court's judgment allowing the Gujarat government to make a decision on the remission of the convicts, which was dismissed by the Supreme Court. Bilkis Bano also approached the Supreme Court in a writ petition challenging the premature release of the 11 convicts and at the same time, a batch of petitions were filed before the Supreme Court challenging the same decision of the Gujarat government to grant the convicts premature release. Among the petitioners in the PIL are Communist Party of India Marxist leader Subhashni Ali, Professor Roop Lekha Verma, journalist Revti Lal, Trinamool Congress MP Mohua Moitra, former IPS officer Miran Chadha Borwankar and National Federation of Indian Women. However, the government as well as the convicts have challenged the maintainability of these PILs filed by the politicians, academicians, journalists and activists in this case, saying that they do not have the locus standi in this case. For context, locus standi means a standing or an effect of the issue which gives a right to a person to approach the court regarding that issue. For example, Bilkis Bano can approach the court against remission of these convicts because she was the victim in this crime. Senior advocates Rishi Malhotra and Siddharth Luthra appearing for the convicts and the additional solicitor general S.V. Raju appearing for the state of Gujarat argued that the grant of remission falls in the domain of criminal law and there is no need of unnecessary interference by third parties in PILs. Senior advocate Indira Jai Singh and advocates Aparna Bhatt, Vrinda Grover, Pratik R. Bombarde and Nizam Pasha appearing for various politicians, journalists, activists and other concerned civil society members have resisted the challenge to the maintainability of the PIL petitions. Besides defending the petitioner's right to bring an action in the case, the council have also questioned the legality of the Gujarat government's decision. Advocate Shobha Gupta, appearing for the victim, has argued before the court that the government did not consider the societal impact of prematurely releasing Bilkis Bano's rapists and she also submitted that the government did not consider several relevant factors that were required under the law. However, the Gujarat government has argued that the remission was legal and was granted after taking into consideration all factors that were required to be examined. The ASG Raju, appearing on behalf of the state of Gujarat, also relied on the reformative theory of punishment and argued that even the convicts of heinous crimes deserve an opportunity to reform themselves and reintegrate into society. When this was argued before the court, Justice B.V. Nagaratsana responded with a question saying, and I quote, how far is the law being applied to inmates in jail? Why are our jails overcrowded, particularly with under trials? Why is the policy of remission being applied selectively? When the matter was heard last week by the Supreme Court, the court questioned if a convict should be granted the license to practice law. 
This was in response to senior advocate Rishi Manotra's informing the bench that convicts' rehabilitation efforts in jail and post-conviction legal practice in an effort to show objective of punishment was not to get revenge but to reform and rehabilitate the criminal. In a similar vein, advocate Sonia Mathur, appearing for another accused, argued that remission was earned and not granted as a matter of charity. Additional Solicitor General S. V. Raju, representing the Union of India this time, made a limited submission relating to the absence of any negative opinion from the Central Bureau of Investigation, which had taken over the probe from the state police. The matter was further heard yesterday on the 31st of August by a bench of Justice B. V. Nagarathna and Justice Ujjal Bhuyan. Senior Advocate Siddharth Luthra, appearing for the convict Ramesh Chandana, informed the court today that not only had his client moved an application before the Supreme Court seeking permission to deposit the unpaid fine imposed on him as a part of his sentence, but also recently paid the fine to the convicting court in Mumbai. Advocates Shobha Gupta and Vrinda Grover for Bilkis Bano and the PIL petitioners respectively had both previously pointed out that the non-payment of the fines by the life convicts contending that their remission was illegal in as much as they had not served the default sentence. Grover had also argued that the willful refusal to pay fines, even when the Bombay High Court directed for the money to be paid as compensation to the victim, reflected as the convict's lack of remorse. Justice B. V. Nagarathana observed, and I quote, You have asked for permission, and now without permission, you have deposited the fine. Senior Advocate Luthra replied, we had filed an application in this court seeking liberty to deposit the fine because of an initial apprehension that the Sessions Court may not accept the fine. My client went running to the court to deposit the fine without waiting to hear from us and the registry accepted it in the normal course. This is not meant to overreach the Supreme Court. Upon hearing this, Justice Nagarasana asked the counsel and I quote, Does non-deposit of fine have any bearing on remission? Did you apprehend this? Answering the query, Senior Advocate Luthra said, and I quote, Non-deposit of the fine has no bearing on remission. But since the issue was raised, we have deposited the fine to reduce the contours of that controversy, so that the contention would not stand in any case, because the fine stands deposited. However, Justice Bhuyan pointed out that the fine was not paid when the revision was granted to the convicts. He said, and I quote, But at the time when the remission was granted to the convicts, the fine was not paid. However, the senior advocate insisted that the non-deposition of the fine had no legal consequence. However, Justice B. V. Nagarasana countered, saying, and I quote, If you did not apprehend the non-deposition of fine would have a bearing on the merits of the case, then there was no need to deposit the fine at this stage. The matter will be heard next by the Supreme Court on the 14th of September, and we will keep you posted on the updates. To know more about the case or read our detailed coverage of the hearings, please visit our website at www.livelaw.in. If you found our video informative, please leave a like and tell us in the comments how we can shape our content to bring you your legal news in more engaging ways. Please also consider joining our channel as a member for only Rs 89 per month. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you.